believe these places can't exist. I mean, uh, science They're... teaches us anything. Uh, what's going on here? They're impossible. Well, we're gonna explore why. And uh, you know what, some of these places aren't technically impossible, but they are very strange, interesting. Yeah. Anomalous. These it's are anomalous all somewhere. adjectives, verbs. <laughs> There's something. First up, we have the Crooked Forest near Grafino in Poland. Now here, there are about 400 pine trees, each with a strange bend at their base. The trees almost look like they're forming the letter J. There are lots of theories as to why these trees are like this, but none have been able to fully explain it. One hypothesis is that heavy snowfall during the trees' early growth could have caused their trunks to bend under the weight, but that seems unlikely. There's a uniformity in the bends that just doesn't seem natural. Some also think that maybe farmers could have deliberately shaped the trees to be used later for furniture or boat building, but not much evidence to support this. Also, that just seems like a huge waste of time. Very involved just to, to like, I don't know, build furniture at a later date. There's also the possibility that German tanks rode over the trees when they were young and caused the curbs, but again, this doesn't make a whole lot of sense either because it's just one section of the forest where the trees look like this. The surrounding forest is totally normal. So how could just one small circle of trees look like this? It's very bizarre. Next up on our list today, we have the Kawaijin Volcano located on Java Island in Indonesia. What's super fascinating about this particular volcano is that it just so happens to produce blue lava. It's stunning, super cool, and a scientific anomaly. The lava, which isn't actually lava, but looks and acts like lava, is so bright that it illuminates any space in which it is present. In fact, there is a sulfur mine built into the volcano, and when workers enter into to it at night, they don't even need lights because the glowing blue liquid, which is made up of sulfur, is enough for them to see without any trouble. So how is this possible? Well, sulfuric gases become condensed into liquid sulfur, which then spews out of Kawaijin and flows down the mountain to resemble bright neon blue lava flow. The only problems with this beautiful marvel are one, it's a result of sulfur, which smells terrible, and two, the sulfur makes the air toxic. Any researchers and photographers who visit the area are required to wear gas masks in order to ensure their safety. This, however, is not the case for those working in the sulfur mine, who are not required to wear or even given safety gear. The men working in the sulfur mines of Kawaijin do so day in and day out unprotected, literally slowly dying from the fumes. Minnesota is home to one of the most mysterious waterfalls in America, Devil's Kettle Falls. The Brule River splits into two separate channels at the falls. One channel continues downstream as a typical waterfall, but the other disappears into a large pothole known as the Devil's Kettle, and no one knows where the water that enters it ends up. It just seems to vanish without a trace. Now, legend has it that the Devil's Kettle is bottomless. Anything that falls into it drops all the way down into hell. But there are other, less dramatic possibilities as well. One theory is that the water from the Devil's Kettle rejoined the Brule River underground, flowing through underground channels in the rock and then rejoining the river a short distance away. It's just not visible to the naked eye. Next up, we have the scientifically inexplicable sleeping city of Kalachi located in Kazakhstan. In 2013, residents of the town began inexplicably falling asleep sleep out of nowhere, and remaining asleep for days at a time. Those affected also experienced memory loss and hallucinations. No one knew what was causing it and why it had affected such a wide range of people, of all ages and all genders. Scientists have theorized that the epidemic was being caused by a uranium mine filled with radon gas located underneath the village, but those living closer to the mine and those working in it remained unaffected. In 2015, after being being unable to figure out the cause of the sleeping illness, the government decided to evacuate the village, which was probably a good decision. The Galapagos Islands were formed by volcanic activity millions of years ago. They started out as barren landscapes, but today they're teeming with life. There are unique plants, there's reptiles, amphibians, birds, marine mammals. 
But how did these creatures arrive on the islands? That's still a bit of a mystery. Scientists believed that the species inhabiting the Galapagos were transported there either by sea or air from the South or Central American mainlands. But these places are over a thousand miles away. Not hard to explain why birds made it over, but reptiles and mammals reaching the area is much more impressive. They must have floated over on rafts of vegetation that had been swept out into the sea during storms or floods. Another mystery is how these animals adapted to the environment of the Galapagos. The species that managed to make the journey had to quickly adapt to survive in their new homes. I guess less of a mystery and more of just an amazing thing about nature that just always seems to overcome. Next on our list today we have the Hestalen lights of the Norwegian countryside. Mysterious lights that are frequently seen in low levels of the skies in Norway. They appear out of thin air and glow either blue, red, or yellow for a short time before disappearing into the night sky. What causes them? No one knows, but what we do know is that they have been around for centuries, as records of the strange anomaly date all the way back to the 19th century. The lights were most active in the 1980s when 20 eyewitness reports were being brought into local police stations per week. While sightings are less often reported today likely because the lights are pretty well known in the area, occurrences are nowhere near few or far between. Theories for what causes the lights have varied, with explanations for their existence ranging from rocket ships to ionized dust all the way to UFOs. While it has yet Yet to be proven, the most popular theory amongst the scientific community is that the lights are the result of combustible gas and dust. Dust floats up from the ground to meet the gas in the sky, causing the gas to combust and emit light until the fuel between them eventually burns out and the lights die down. But who knows? I mean, personally, I think it's probably aliens. In Siberia, there's a massive crater that continues to grow. It's known as the Gateway to the Underworld. The crater started forming in the 60s when a section of forest in the region was cleared for logging. Without the trees to give shade, the ground started to thaw more rapidly during the summer months. This sped up the thawing process and caused the permafrost to melt, leading to the collapse of the ground and the formation of the crater. What makes the crater such a topic of interest and a concern really is how fast it's forming. It's been growing at an alarming rate. Scientists are closely studying the crater because it exposes all these layers of soil that have been frozen for thousands of years. And these layers contain all this information about past climates and environments and all the ancient plants and animals that once lived in the area. So that part is actually pretty cool. Next up, we have the never-ending lightning storm which takes place in western Venezuela over Catatumbo River. Every year, for 260 nights, lightning lights up the sky above the river, beginning at 7 p.m. and ending 10 hours later at 5 a.m. Why? Well, no one knows for sure. One theory was that uranium located in the lake's bedrock was causing the storms, but that has been widely discredited by scientists. Today, the leading theory is that the shape of the mountain surrounding the lakes cause warm trade winds to collide with cold air, a collision which is then fueled by the rapidly evaporating water from the lake and methane from a nearby oil field. But of course, as I said, no one knows for sure. What makes things even more confusing for researchers though is the fact that for a while in 2010, the storms just vanished, only to spark right back up six weeks later as though they had never stopped. Just take a look at this body of water in Australia. This hasn't been photoshopped. This is actually the color of Lake Hillier in Western Australia. So why is the lake pink? Scientists are not 100% sure. Some believe that it's a combination of factors, like the presence of certain minerals and microorganisms that could be causing it. One of the most popular theories is that there is a type of algae in the lake, and when it interacts with the salt in the water and the sunlight, it creates that reddish pink color. Another theory is that the color is caused by halobacteria, and these bacteria thrive in salty environments and produce a pink pigment as a byproduct of their metabolism. And similar to that algae theory, the sunlight and salt just intensify the pink color. It doesn't look like it either, but this lake is actually safe to swim in, and you don't need to worry about all the dangerous creatures that you find in most Australian waters either. The water is highly saline, making it buoyant 
and inhospitable to a lot of dangerous forms of life. Just try not to accidentally gulp down a bunch of the water or like get it in your eyes. There's 10 times more salt here than the water in the ocean. So that's a lot of salt. And finally, we have the petrifying well located in North Yorkshire. Nature's Medusa. The petrifying well is a place where anything can be turned into solid stone. The process can take as little as three and as long as five months. The transformation happens as water trickles down a cliffside onto whatever is placed below it. Over time, each and every item placed below slowly becomes a statue. Originally, it was believed that the area had been cursed by a witch, but of course, scientists felt the need to come up with a different explanation. A process once thought impossible without the presence of curses or magic has now been revealed to be the result of water with an unusually high mineral content that creates a hard mineral shell over anything it touches. It's pretty much the same process that forms stalactites in caves. The water flows and hardens and builds and voila. All of a sudden, a bunch of people believe a cliff was cursed by a witch. But I mean, it still could be. Thanks, James. I don't believe in all, uh, all this science crapola. I know. What are it's they? cursed by a witch, damn it. And the Her government's sister was a witch. <laughs> the government's just trying to hide it. They're trying to hide witches yeah, from us. The, all that's know. all science is. They're just they're hiding magic and aliens. Which are also magic. So, with all that said, I've been your host, James. I've been your host, Hannah. We're gonna catch you in the next magical extravaganza.